Hey, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough, and uh, welcome to my channel and welcome back. For anyone that's been following my South African travels, I'm finally doing another episode. Right, just making sure these are in place again, and I might need my glasses. So this is, this is really funny to pick up. Um, if you actually watch my channel, you'll see that I've got some very large diamond paintings. And this is now, so this is a 40 by 50. It's now my smallest diamond painting that I'm currently working on. And I just need to adjust some lighting there. Just so that I can see. Okay, so <clears throat> where did I leave off before? I think the last time was... We went and did Sani Pass, and this is where we travelled from. So our next day was we travelled from <coughs> Drakensburg. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, God. Sorry. <coughs> travelled to Drakensburg from Drakensburg to Chinster East. Um, now, not much happened on that drive. We travelled about, what do I do, 500, 550, somewhere along there, five, what have I got there, 520 kilometres approximately. Part of those travels, we did travel through um, where Nelson Mandela was born and um, his family home. So I will pop some pictures in of his home um, there to what well, well, was his home because he's passed um, but it was just a long day of travel that was all we did um, by the end of the day we were so grateful to get out of the bus at the very end of the day to know that that was it um, when we got to where we were staying, it was really amusing because the bus pulls up and it's, it's the first time we'd ever had to deal with it. But the bus pulled up and Craig, our guide, turns around and said, now we've got a bit of a hill, the bus will not go up it. So you will need to grab your bags. Did we grab our bags? No, we just had to grab what we had um, a carry on on the bus. We just had to grab that and take that up with us and then um, they would bring the bags up to us. Craig also turned around to said to Nathan and I, he said, no chance of a, a two single beds tonight, we've got you the honeymoon suite. <laughs> so we actually got the honeymoon suite, so finally we got we didn't have to jostle around with beds or anything. We got the honeymoon suite and it was quite nice. So um, it was, it had a bed, it had the, the one big room plus the ensuite, but it also, so you had the bed, you had a living and lounge area and you also had a kitchen. So it was quite impressive. It was pretty good. It made up for all the single beds we had before. It had the thatched roof. Um, so I'll touch on something about that thatched roof um, afterwards in a little bit. Um, but yeah, we've walked up this hill and and yeah, uh, it was it was absolutely beautiful. It was going on. Was it going on dusk when we got there? Um, sorry. What did we see? Oh yeah, it was just going on, it wasn't quite dusk, but by the time we got into our room and had showers, um, actually no, we didn't even have a shower, we went back, back to our room um, and got our gear inside. We then went for a walk and we actually walked along the beach, which was actually the east coast of the Indian Ocean. Um, to us, it's, that's quite special to us because we were on the east coast of the Indian 
Indian Ocean, but we actually live on the west coast. Uh, yeah, the west. We face. We face. When we look west, we see the Indian Ocean, but at Chinstar, when we looked east, it was the Indian Ocean. So basically, we lived on the other side of the ocean that we were looking at, which is really cool. But we've gone for this walk up the beach. And after being, after travelling more than 500 k's, we were so relaxed and calm. Uh, that bus ride was, uh, wasn't, wasn't that enjoyable. I mean, the bus drive's okay, but when you're cramped on a bus all day, you're not seeing anything but what goes past the window. Yeah. But yeah, we, um, so yeah, we walked along the beach. You know, we all got off and we all, you know, I think we all finished off in our rooms and then went to the beach and just walked along, took our shoes off. Um, there's a couple of guys that were fishing. Nathan actually stopped and had a, a yak to one of the guys that was fishing there. And are they pippies? Things that they're in the on the the little things that you see on the um, I don't we don't see them where we come from, but you get the little critters that just dig into the sand at the beach. Um, there were so many of them. I actually took some video footage because I was so fascinated by them, but that's because you know I don't see them. Um, so you, I might include some video footage of that in here. Um, but we've gone and we've walked along the beach and, oh gosh, it was beautiful. I hope you enjoy it. I'll put some photos in here. Um, the, it's pretty hard to explain the actual feeling of being on this beach. And even now I'm looking at these pictures and it's instantly bringing me to that, that place. It was absolutely beautiful. It was beautiful. But it's just brought me to that nice, calming place. And I can still remember um, there's a slight bit of sea spray coming off. Or, or Sorry, ocean mist, I should say. There was a bit of ocean mist there. Um, it was just going on just about sunset, um, which I think I've got some pictures there where I can show the sunset starting to come down anyway. I've got some pictures where you can actually see the sea mist or the ocean mist or whatever it is. But even just talking about that has just brought me down to, oh, I'm straight back into that whole, I, I, I'm as if I'm there. Um, that was the impact of just walking on that beach. Um, so from there, what did we do? We went had our showers and then went to dinner. Dinner was on one long table. I mean, there were other tables there, but they'd set us up on one big long table. It wasn't too bad of a dinner. Nothing that really stands out. I don't even think Nathan... Um,
excuse me. I don't even think Nathan made much of a thing about dinner. You know, normally it's like, oh, he loves the food, you know, because he's tasting different stuff and that, but not this time. He wasn't even raving about dinner. Um, so, yeah, from there, like Nathan and I, apparently in Nathan's previous life he was a big drinker, so his life before me, and before life with Nathan I used to be a big drinker, but together we, we don't drink much. But we actually, because of the drive, because of the travelling on the bus, we actually went to the bar and had a couple of drinks. I discovered that I had in free internet access at the bar, um, and although I had free internet access in the room, the internet was not good. So Nathan was turned around and went, oh, well, I'm going to bed. And I said, well, I'm going to sit up and update the website because where we'd been in Drakensburg, we'd had such poor um, internet or no internet. Um, it was a case. Oops. It was a case that this is my chance to get everything updated. So I put stuff on Facebook and updated the website so family knew where we were because we'd basically fallen off the face of the earth for a bit. I don't even need to pull them out. Um, so yeah, we um, I sat there and had I think I ended up having about three or four scotches that night while I was updating the website and then got a fair amount done and then when I'd actually had enough they'd shut, they shut the bar I'd been there for so long I'd shut the bar <laughs> I couldn't get any more to drink I mean I was just casually uploading and doing stuff so yeah um, it's basically the only time I really sat anywhere outside of the room without Nathan so that was in itself was a bit refreshing too because we were so much um, with each other everywhere we went that we weren't getting our own space so it was really nice to just actually sit there and although not doing anything, just have that personal free space, which, yeah. Um, yeah, so the bar was shut. I couldn't get any more drink. I'd done as much uploading as I could. And so I went to bed. So I went back to our room. So our room, which was massive, gone in. Um, and although while, while we're travelling, I shower three times a day. As soon as I get out of bed, when we get off the road once we come in from being on the road and then I have another shower before I go to bed. I can't go to bed. I can't sleep unless I've had, I struggle to sleep unless I've had a shower. Um, so I've gotten, up, I've gotten into the room, had a shower, sat up, still doing something. Oh, I was still trying to get some more stuff on. Although I had very limited internet, I was still trying to get some more stuff uploaded. Um, but while I was sitting there, we've heard this scurrying sound. Hang on, I'm just trying to see if I can spot that. Can't see that. Oh, I've worked with these, this one for a while. C, 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 C. I can't see any. Okay. These. Um. I've heard, we've heard this scurrying thing on the roof, so it's a thatched roof. And then next thing, something has landed in my hair. It's just plopped on my head. And I will say plopped because I've just turned around and gone to Nathan, there's a spider's landed in my hair. That's my first thought, spider in my hair. And like I am absolutely petrified. So I've frozen solid stick, solid. Not game enough to move because I'm just so scared that this spider is on my head. And then Nathan's come over and looked and looked. He goes, there's no spider. There's nothing there. And then he stopped talking. And I went, it's a spider. Get it off. And he goes, no, it's not a spider. Whatever it was that was scurrying up there had dropped something on me. Basically, I, this critter had dropped poo in my hair. And me not really 
him saying that there wasn't a spider, I've gone, okay, so it's not a spider. And I've lifted my hand up and put it on, my, on top of my head and I've pulled it away. <coughs> and I've spelt it. And it's like, oh, crap, some animal has shat in my hair. And so I'm immediately off to the shower. <laughs> so two showers in probably 20 minutes. So off I went to the shower and had another shower and washed my hair. I washed my hair um, twice, I think it was, just to try and get it out. And even then I didn't feel like I got it all out. Um, yeah, but I washed, so I washed my hair. And still, still felt like I could smell it later on. Um, but yeah, so, oops, that's too many. There's a tweezers. I don't know where the tweezers are. Where are my tweezers? Where are they? Alright, so we've, um, that's better. Washed the hair a couple of times. Oh, yeah. But um, we had organised with everybody else that it was going to be an amazing we didn't know it was going to be an amazing sunrise, but we knew it was going to be a fantastic view of the sunrise. So we've all, the night before we are discussing about, we'd looked at the time, what the time we'd need to get up to be able to take photos of the sunrise. And so the alarms are set early and Nathan's turned around and said to me, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, I'm the one, me, I'm the one with the camera, but Nathan's gone, he's not going to worry about, worry about it. So the alarm's gone off in the morning and I've gotten out of bed, grabbed the camera and I've gone around to a few different places um, taking some photos. So hopefully you'll see some photos around here somewhere. Um, but yeah, taking, took some photos from different locations. And then, oh, me and my, me and names, one of the guys we actually met on the tour, he's got bucket loads of cameras but he had something he had stuff he was right up the top of where we were staying and had phenomenal views so he's turned around and signaled to come up because he had a couple of balconies so we've gone well I've gone up there and taken heaps of photos um, so hopefully you're enjoying whatever photos I'm showing now um, so, you know, I've gone up there, I've, I've gone out taking all these photos without, the only thing I've done is just put on tracky dats and gone, or gotten some quick clothes on and gone up and then taken these photos. Um, and, yeah, gone and taken these photos. And they're beautiful. There's some beautiful photos taken. Then what we did... Once we'd taken all the photos that we did want to take, I um, went back to our room and Nathan had actually made coffee. So like I'd gotten back to the room and it was freshly made coffee. I still remember coming back to the room going, oh, coffee. And that, that, out where we, where we were, it just all smelled of coffee. Oh, yum. Oh, what am I looking at? H's, there we go. Um, so, yeah, we've sat and chilled and had our coffees and then gone and packed up, had our showers, packed up, put our toothbrushes, we'd had our showers and packed up, put our suitcases outside, we picked up and then gone to breakfast. Um... And while we're at breakfast, Craig turns around and he says, oh, we've got an optional tour that we can do today, but it's it's not something that is on your plans at all. Um, it's all. This is all dependent on so many circumstances that we don't offer it as an optional until you're actually, we are here. So he gave us a little bit of a rundown and he turned around and said you'll be seeing, you will be seeing white lions. 
and it was just a case of, yep, we're doing it. Um, if we didn't do it, we were just going to be sitting around doing nothing there, probably, well, shouldn't say nothing, but enjoying the beach or whatever. But everybody in our tour group went, yep, we're all doing it. So the way they tackled that, it, if, if we hadn't done that, if we hadn't all done it, um, those that went would have gone and then um, we would have, those that didn't go would have stayed at the hotel at where we were staying. Um, but because we were all going to this thing, um, we had our bags loaded up on the bus, but we were put straight into the four-wheel drive vehicles that were taking us on our tour. So, Ink Wank Wenzi, uh, private game lodges where we went to, and that was their vehicles that were good to go. They're waiting for us. Um, so, hang on. Just trying to get the photos of where we were. Which is the 29th. So, yeah, we were picked up and taken to um, Inquinquinzi Private Game Reserve. Got to the lodge there. Um, I mean, that's where we, we actually paid for our, the tour. Inside, um, and then we were all pulled up into our four drives to be taken away. And oh well, that was absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Really glad we did that because we. Hang on, I'm just. No, these drills aren't good enough to do that. Um, we um, yeah, we piled in the vehicles and off we went into the um, the, the private game reserve. So the difference between a private game reserve and a public is there's obviously not as many people, and they, it's very controlled on the amount of people that do actually go there, um, and the guides are just so different. Um, I mean, you go the, the standard ones, and yeah, the guides are very knowledgeable, but with the private ones, they just seem to be more passionate about what they do, if that makes any sense. Um, but our guide, he was a white South African, um, and oh my gosh, he was so passionate all about it all. He, he hardly stopped talking. Um, but so much information that he gave us was brilliant. Um, I think the first thing we saw was we saw some monkeys of some sort. They were just, they disappeared so quickly. They saw us and bolted. But then we turned around. Um, from there we, we drove around and we saw ostriches which were, um, I don't think we saw any male ostriches, we only saw the female ostriches. Um, so this is me, I'm reaching into my memory banks here of what we saw. Um, and then, oh my goodness, there was this huge, huge herd of giraffes. A big, massive group of giraffes. And we sat there for quite a while, taking pictures um, while our guide was telling us all about all about the right, the um, all about the giraffes, the buck, the female. There was actually a young calf there. Um, one of the giraffes actually that looked like it must have. He said it was the mother. The mother actually kicked out towards one of the males to stay away from her calf. Um, but yeah, it was just, there were so many of them. And I'll, oh, you'll see um, some video footage um, 
of them. So I hope you like that. And if you look at top of, if you look at the bulls, you can see on top of the horse itself there would be no air, whereas the cows they completely covered with air. So yeah, we saw the giraffes and we got a lot of a lot of comments and a lot of information about, about them from them, from them. So our guide's name was Jacques. Um, yeah, he was a really nice guy, really nice guy. Then um, we've left the giraffes and continued on and we've come across this fenced area. Um, and you go up to the gate and Jarts unlocks the gate and then drives in and then he shuts the gates and locks it. Then he goes to, looks like a, a safe box uh, and he's with keys and he's unlocked that and um, he's grabbed a bag that's, it actually says first aid. The bag was actually said first aid. So it looked like he just grabbed a first aid kit. Um, and then he got back in the seat. Okay, so then he opened the second gate. We drove through. And um, he shut and locked that gate. And then we went round a little bit. And then, you know, if we were... Less than five minutes and we were at this massive pride of lions. And so you got the normal lions, but there was also some white lions in there. So I'll show you a range of video footage here of those lions, but um, there is the female lion. There is a female lioness. Well, the lioness is a female. The lioness and a cub, which is now I'm doing a big blank custom of. Um, so that's where you'll see her here. Um, there is a cup you can actually see noticeably see the difference between a normal line and a white line. But these lines were not like the ones that were in the Kruger National Park. These lines were what's the best way to put it? Well fed. They yeah, they, they seem to have a lot of meat on their body. Let's put it that way. So they were very well fed, very content. Um, this is the domino You were pretty much at the moment. What happened, unfortunately? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of it yeah. for a minute. Yeah. That's only about three years old, huh? Okay. He's couching it. That's what he's yeah. doing. Just wait for him to scratch. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
He's gonna yell in the play. Actually, no. No? Um, I'll tell you what happened here was we had a, all the big white male line here, but unfortunately he died in his east cut section. So, what happens now is this younger one here mm. would, would start taking a uh, dominance. So, even with that one on the left, the white one, like I said, he's about three years old now. And yeah, we just sat there and watched them. We drove around a little bit to another side and we saw ones on the other, still with the same pride but just on a different angle um, and more of them. We swapped with the other, the other four-wheel drive that was part of our tour group because um, we were in two four-wheel drives. Um, we swapped locations by, ve you know, the vehicles moved around so that um, we could see more as something different than the other group that could see what we were looking at. Um, but yeah, that was absolutely stunning to see and watch. And then we turned around and I suppose we were in there half an hour, I think, maybe even longer, just just enjoying that. So they're like the, these lions are in a fenced off area. Um, it was electrified and the discussion along those lines was they were fenced off because of poachers and it was their way of um, keeping the lions secure and not having them roaming around to the neighbouring areas and the farms that were actually in the areas too. So they, the, the lions were um, well fed and some of it is in that enclosure, it's a, it's not a small enclosure, it was a big enclosure. Um, you know, the fence line that we saw was way off to the distance. Um, but in inside that area there was zebras, you know, I saw zebras there. So it's not like they didn't have to hunt. They did have a source of food in there. But uh, looks like they were also fed by the local farming community um, used to donate food to them so they wouldn't, I don't know, so that they were a lot happier <laughs> would be the better way to put it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we've gone from when we left there, although we were in two vehicles, each vehicle left separately, so one vehicle went, went through the gate we went through the first gate and then got in this middle section and then he's put whatever he had in his, what he'd taken out, put that back and then he's gotten, opened the gate, gone through and shut that gate. So there was always at least one gate shut um, to prevent any any of the lines escaping if they were in the area. So we've left there. And then Nathan's turned around and he goes, did you see the gun? <laughs> and I went, what gun? <laughs> and he goes, that box, that, that bag that, that um, Jacques got out of the safe wasn't just a first aid kit. Um, hang on, just looking to see where there's anything. Um, yeah, that's not a first, that wasn't a first aid kit. What it actually was is, um, was a gun. So, I mean, we're in open vehicles. If if a lion had decided that he was hungry, he would have gone for somebody and they would have had to have shot it. Um, so they had the gun for that purpose. Um, but you're not really aware of it because of the way they handled, the way they handled putting it in the vehicle. And that. What that also means is that there's no... The only location, there's only specific locations that they have guns and they're not roaming, the, the guides in that aren't going all over the park with guns on them. So that's really good, really good. Yeah, look for more ends, look for more ends. There's another end. It's not many. Okay.
Gosh, I'm so not used to looking at these numbers. I haven't done this, these symbols. I haven't done this for ages. How many O? Do I have any P's? Now, go straight to the Q's. Um, but yeah, so we've gotten out of there and we've gotten to, we're at the top of the hill looking out and and just stopped and had a drink and I had opened up our soft drink and, and just had a bit of a relaxed spot there and just enjoyed the view. Um, there's just hills everywhere, that's all there basically was. Um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, and then we left there and went back exactly the same way we came in. Um, so we went back around the big herd of giraffes um, and then around to the lodge. And then once we got back to the lodge, we were then um, brought around to the back of the, the lodge to an area that was all fenced off and that we've gone in there and um, Jarts has actually whistled and started calling and we didn't know what it was he was calling and then he turns around and they start he, he, they, they, they don't come and he says oh, typical cats they don't come when you call them and <clears throat> Those typical cats were not little cats. Those typical cats, that's an old, I think, hang on. Yeah, that's an old. Those typical cats were actually cheetahs. So we were in an enclosure with cheetahs and he's turned around and he's gone, they will not harm you unless. Um, <clears throat> with there was a female and two males and they were brothers and sisters they had gained them um, as orphans and were hand reared and couldn't be put back into the wild because of that so we're told that with the with the males you could only pat them on the head, you could scratch their heads if they were sitting down. If they were standing up, they don't mind being touched, but you only touch their head if they're sitting down. Um, whereas the female, we were able to pat while she was standing up, lying down. Whatever. So I'll put some footage in here of um, being in with the cheetahs. Male, this is a male. Nice and big. Oh. When he's standing up, you can touch him all over. Nice in the back. No, you can touch him anyway. You can do it because Oh, oh look! Like yeah. 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 licking your hand. Nice. Oh. Hand there, you lick it too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Hmm. 
Okay, stay away from that end. You're doing what you're meant to, aren't you? Um, it was such an amazing experience to be actually patting cheetahs. Um, I actually had the female did end up licking my hand and the tongue was, it was rougher than a normal, like a, a domestic cat. Um, but she, when we were patting her, she purred. And hopefully I can find that footage. I should have that footage where you'll hear her purring. Absolutely purring. It's beautiful. Ah, so, yeah, we um, spent a fair amount of time in there with the cheetahs and then we've come out and had a quick drink and then we've hopped on the bus. Um, and drove to Port Elizabeth. And pretty uneventful drive. Um, I'm looking through my photos and as I look through my photos I can see how uneventful the drive was. But after spending time with Lions. I, we did see leopard uh, zebras in there up closer, um, but spending time with time with the leopards and that we did a, a. It wasn't too long of a drive to Port Elizabeth, and Port Elizabeth was the Paxton Hotel. Um, we. <laughs> We got there and that was one where we've walked in, uh, gone in, checked in and then gone to our room which was on the ground ground level. But we've checked in, walked into the room and I've turned around and walked straight back out again and gone straight to Craig Long. I've done it again. <laughs> They're giving us single beds. <laughs> so... Um, back to the concierge desk and got it all arranged and we got put into a room, nice big room actually, a fair size room. Um, and it was a horrible, it was a yucky wet night, it rained and all of that and there was no restaurant attached to this hotel we were staying at. So it was a case of it was find your own food that night. Um, I mean, we always paid for our meals, but this night was a case of um, actually having to go out of the area. Um, apparently out the road was a good pizza place and all of this. And other, other people that are tour were going, but Nathan and I had gotten to the point where we just wanted time alone. And just weren't interested in going out for dinner with them. So we rung and got room service. Which wasn't really anything special to write home about. But yeah, we just had room service. And I think Nathan was asleep by 8 o'clock. Um, yeah, so it was just a... It was a night where we weren't having to talk to anybody else. It was just each other and quiet and I was still yet again like I do at the end of every night get on the net update update you know keep the family knowing and in touch of what we're doing um, keeping up with Facebook um, so the, you know, just those little things where the family like to know that you're safe so what you do what you can to make them know let them know that you are safe um, So yeah, that's that was um, that was when we went and saw the cheers.
padded cheetahs and spent time with white lions and it was that was a really good day really good day the huh, the next day we woke up to miserable miserable weather hang on oh, come off it uh, it was yucky it was wet it was um it was a good day to be stuck in a bus actually best way to put it um but we went to Mouse End, Rivers End, Storms End, oh, can't quite remember, um, Tiki, Tiki Yama Nature Reserve, I think, oh, I can't remember how, how it was pronounced, um, but there was, it was just, Massive, they had a massive um, suspension bridge going over a gorge. Um, and I, I don't know how much footage I've got. I've got some video footage. Um, ah, it was Storms River Mouth is what it was, the location was called. Um, and it was wet and raining. So... There was a lot of walking. Now, I'm a very unfit person and it was going upstairs, downstairs and around and oh, it was there. It was a struggle. There was a, quite a few times where I'd had to stop to catch my breath. Um, and I think it was that point they realised how unfit I'd gotten. But, yeah. Oh, pardon me. But yeah, it was a... Nice walk in the rain. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have been so bad if it hadn't have kept having to hold on to things because the path was slippery and all that. And there was also, so we've gone around and done the, gone up and then down to the extension bridge and around. Um, and thankfully coming back was coming back a different, no, it was the same route, but because we were it's more going downhill, it was, it wasn't as bad um, and then we went and sat and had lunch um, where the birds were so cheeky um, if you left the table for 30 seconds or possibly even less the bird a bird would jump in and try and take your food which did I get Hang on, I think I got the bird. Um, yeah. Let's wait for this camera to catch up. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture in here of the bird that's just, he's just jumped onto somebody's table. Well, they've just gone to grab something, not gone to the bathroom or anything like that. She's just got, gotten up to go grab some sauce or something like that. And this bird has just jumped in, um, shoot it away. But they're, they're just the cheek of these birds, if you're not looking, bang, they're in so quick. Um, and then well, we left there and then drove to Port Elizabeth. Um, I don't think we saw anything exciting after that. Pardon me. It was just... No, we didn't go to Port... It was, we'd come from Port Elizabeth. We, we'd come from Port Elizabeth. We were heading to Nysna. Um, and... We got there and we'd un 
had gotten it all of our, we'd gotten off the bus from there. Um, who was it? It was while we were at uh, in Point Quincy that the guide turned around and told us about Amarilla. So he turned around and said, you know, you've got to try Amarilla and you told us about it. Don't tell me I've just been... Oh no. Um, yeah, told us to give that a try. And so I've said to Nathan, well, when we get to our next stop, that's where I'll have a drink with dinner and I'll give it a try. Um, but yeah, we've gotten in red again. It's a nice accommodation. It was two single beds, but they were made up together. Um, and it was a, oh, the ensuite had, it was a massive long shower with his and her showers. Um, yeah, in them. So it was, it was a big shower area. The bathroom was pretty big. Um, it's a nice, com nice, comfortable room, but it was cold. But I don't know whether it was cold because it was just miserable weather with rain um, and the heating didn't do much. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've had our shower. We've unpacked and had our showers and gone, gone to dinner. And the where the dinner was was a massive, massive pub in the there's a bar. You've had restaurant here, bar in the middle, and restaurant here with smaller restaurant rooms. Um, so you had a real intimate atmosphere when you had dinner. Um, but we've gone into the bar and there's a log fire going and um, Turned around and Nathan's like going, oh, I'm going to have a beer. And I said, well, well, I'm going to try the Amarillo. I've got to give it a go. And so we've gone up to the bar and asked the guy, guy about whether he's got any. And he's just given us a smile going, of course we do. Um, and so I've turned around and said, well, I'd like to have, I'll have, have some. And I said, how do people have it? And he... he he just went, oh, they just have it in the bath with some ice. And I said, do you mind if I have a look at, have a look at it? And he brought it out and showed it to us. And I've looked at it and gone, oh, well, it's it's like Bailey's. And you have Bailey's, Bailey's is milk and ice. And he goes, yeah, that's you can have it that way, but you can have it straight. So I've turned around and I've said to Nathan, well, I'm going to try it straight on. I'm going to try it on ice. And... It went down a treat. It was so nice. It was really nice. Um, hang on. Concentrating hard to see if I can find letters. Um, no teas. So yeah, it was quite an enjoyable drink. I had that one. And then I had another, and then I had another. So I'd had three Amarillas before dinner. <laughs> and then we went and had dinner. Where did I see that in? Um, I'd had another couple of Amarillas with dinner. There it is there. And one of the guys that was traveling with us it was his birthday so he was oh i'm buying he went i'm buying it, drinks for everyone because it's my birthday and i buy everyone a round of drinks and like i was actually i wasn't drinking just single shots i was drinking double shots of amarillo and ice and he goes i'll get you exact you can all have exactly what you're drinking now so I've had another Amarillo. Um, so I was a little bit wobbly on the legs, would be to say the least, about on the way home, uh, back to our room. But, oh my goodness, I will, I reckon I drank that night one whole bottle of Amarillo all to myself. 
um, which kind of surprised Nathan because he'd not seen me drink like that. Um, but yeah. Excuse me, looking for the use. Any more use? I'll probably find them as soon as I shut them. Ah. So, yeah, being on the Amarillo that night, um, we were spending two nights at Neisner uh, at Happy, Happy Hollow, I think it was called. Um, the next day was heading to an ostrich farm and into caves. Um, so I'm very, gosh, I can't tell the difference between U's and V's and Y's now. So we're having the um, pleasure of not having to pack up the suitcases and get in a vehicle and drive all the way for a day. We've just, um, it was just a casual get up and make our way to breakfast and then the bus and then we off we went and some absolutely beautiful, beautiful scenery from there. So we went to Utshon, I think it's pronounced. So when you've got the um, Was it mainly the um, German? So a lot of the places that run this area had German names. Um, but we'd gone um, and it was just a beautiful drive, very hilly. And we'd gone into, so we went to the caves first. Uh, and what were the caves? Kango Caves. And... It was really funny because we got the guided tour, the guides telling us all about different things there. And one of them, one of the zones there is within those caves, they're called the Honeymoon Suite. So they've got some story about um, basically that, that section of the room, it looked like a massive king size four poster bed. And you look at it and you can see it. And then she goes, and this being the honeymoon suite, there's lots of babies made. And you look up and there's tiny little stalactites just starting to form. Well, couldn't shouldn't say it's just starting to form. But the stalactites are starting to form. Um, um, and so that's where they're calling babies. So it's just a slow process. Um, so you've got stalagmites and stalactites and for anyone, it's what I was taught, if you don't understand the difference between a stalagmite and a stalactite, a stalactite holds on tightly to the top of the cave, whereas a stalagmite, stalagmite might reach the ceiling. Um, so that's how I remember whether it's a stalagmite or a stalactite. So all these little tiny stalactites are, are forming on the roof of the cave in just in that area. Um, yeah, so we've been taken in and they do the, the lights off so you see what it's like without any lights on and how it would have been like for those that were the explorers of the caves, you know, what they would, what it would have been like because they've just come into these big, massive openings, but it was still pitch black and the only thing that they would have seen been able to see there was with torches um, which when they shone the torch around it didn't go very far at all yeah those cool caves were pretty cool and then from there we went to the um, ostrich farm and I hope you enjoyed these pictures because I'll only show you pictures but I'll fill on this bit. But on the we went to the Odd Stridge Farm and we're introduced to Lady Gaga and Michael Jackson. So I I might put you the picture of Michael Jackson 
uh, and Lady Gaga are there, but the Lady Gaga is actually the pure white ostrich. I don't know what the deal was with why they called Michael Jackson Michael Jackson, um, but yeah, Lady Gaga. So they're the two two ostriches that were separate to everybody else. Um, we did got shown ostrich eggs. We got to feed the ostriches. And then she turns around and she goes, and we've got some way distant relatives to the ostrich, although it's not really a, a relative. Um, and then she started talking about them, and I've turned around and said to Nathan, they're emus. I bet you it's emus that she's talking about. And then she turns around and calls them emus. Um, yeah, the spelling is E-M-U. Pronunciation is emu, but she was calling them emus, as in emos, emus. And it was just, Nathan and I just chuckled every time she said emu, <laughs> because they don't know. <laughs> Hello, buddy boy. Um, so, yeah, so we went, um, had a look around there. We got to actually got to sit on an ostrich, so you'll, I'll show you that picture. And then we went in to the restaurant and tried a few interesting meals. Um, I decided I was going to try the ostrich. Nathan had already had ostrich, um, but I'd gone. I said, "Oh well, I'll give it a try." I gave it a try. Nathan ended up eating my ostrich too because I just I couldn't eat it. I tried it. At least I tried it. Um, I like my steaks, so yeah. Um, then from there, um, we went back to Nisna and we had a meal. It was a group meal because the meal the night before we had a meal, we were at our own tables in separate areas. Um, but this time was a we had dinner was a group meal, um, so I got on the um, Amarillo again. <laughs> it's a really nice drink. I just said to Nathan, "Well, I'm here. I might as well drink their drinks." Um, and they actually brought out a birthday cake for Dave because it was his birthday. Um, so yeah, they did a special birthday for him, which is really cool. So um, that's it at Neisner. What I will do is I'm going to stop here um, and my next recording will be of the next leg of our trip and um, I will actually complete this section here and when I start the next leg of the trip will be the next section of this painting. Um, but hopefully you've liked what I've um, what I've shown you and the story and um, Anna. Yes, I finally got there to the Amarillo story where I learned how I started drinking Amarillo. <laughs> uh, my first night was an interesting night, and I didn't do anything silly. But um, yeah, I really like really like that drink. Um, so yeah. So stay tuned for next episode um, and um, got a few more days to talk about in this trip because that was, um, hang on, first of October. Um, so we've got about three more days of our trip uh, left to go. So stay tuned for the uh, next episode. Um, hit the like, leave a comment, um, but please hit the bell so that then you'll be notified of the next of what all my other ones that I post up post, and you'll also be notified when my next uh, South African whip and chat is. So thank you for watching and bye for now.